Hi everybody! I'm sorry I'm a couple of minutes late today. I've got no excuse, I don't know, the time just got away from me. Anyway, I hope you're all well. If you're living in the UK, you are enjoying a fantastic heat wave. Um, and if you're living anywhere else, <laughs> then you're probably already warmer than we are. Um, oh dear me, Regina. You're in the blinking wars today. Oh, I hope it's soon... Hope you soon get better. Hi Shaz, hi Deborah, hi Regina, hi Jen. Right, I've got some things to go through with you before we actually get round to making a um, page for the junk journal. First thing to tell you is that the winner of the giveaway journal finally managed to get in touch with me on Wednesday, I think it was. Um, of course, she'd been trying to comment on the videos on it because people were still trying to enter. Uh, so she couldn't get through to me that way. However, she did manage to get a hold of me and it's on its way to her and it should be delivered on Monday and I hope she loves it. Um, next thing I want... <laughs> so now you, you know, you won't be stuck for any papers or anything. You won't even have to go to Hobby Lobby half the time. Well, you will, obviously, for ink and lace and everything else. But it's great to have a printer, so excellent. Max is absent today she's got other things to do but she said she'd uh, watch us on catch up so have a nice day max um the other thing i wanted to talk to you about i just put a post up on my page it's about uh, somebody asked me if i would consider doing a paid for series of tutorials about doing a junk journal from the very start to the very end and i don't want to do anything paid for I like everything I do to be free so everybody can enjoy it. You know, all the stuff that we buy is expensive enough. And I'm really lucky in as much as people do donate to my channel, um, which which all helps with keeping it going. And, you know, people are kind enough to buy the finished pieces. So that goes back into the pot and helps keep it free. So I am considering doing a free series um, of making a junk journal from the very start to the very end um, it'll be quite long so it'll have to be sort of you know in segments um, otherwise it would be like a week and by the end of it I'd be looking pretty tired so um, let me know if you're interested in that I think I think it's possible possibly a good thing to do because as it stands at the moment you're dipping into my lives wherever I am on, on the journal and you don't sort of see the whole process I, get, I might give you some hopefully give you some good ideas for some pages and stuff but not the actual construction and you know all the tartan at the end and whatever so if you're interested in that let me know it it won't be an instant thing um i'll start to record some videos and get a chunk of them together before I, I release them. But let me know if you're not interested, if nobody's interested in it, that's, that's fine. Um, but I, I just don't know. And the next thing that I want to tell you about is so blooming exciting. It's just, it's just one of the nicest things that has ever, ever happened to me, really. Um, yeah, Mr. Fixit says, apart from him, which goes without saying. I mean, we all know he's a star. Um, but yesterday I was sitting here and I was crafting away, doing my junk journal, and I looked up and the post office van thing was outside. And I've seen him there before and he, he goes to next door. So I just I slipped up, saw him and thought, oh, he must be delivering to next door. Put my head down, got on again. Then there was a knock at the door and I thought, ooh, I wonder what this could be. Because I'm always ordering stuff from AliExpress and eBay and whatever. So, you know, what can this be? <laughs> so um, because I'm shielding from coronavirus, Mr. Fixit had to go wait for the man to go and then go outside with his gloves and everything on and decontaminate everything. Um, and then he tipped out the contents of, of what was in this parcel onto my desk. And it's this. And it's, I'm just beyond happy with it. I'm so, oh dear. I'll show you what it is. Uh, this pack of lace here. Look at this beautiful, beautiful lace. It's, it's corded lace. It's beautiful. 
it's cream and it would go so well in the journal I'm doing at the moment. And some gingham, which I love. I have always loved gingham since I was a little girl. I really love it. So some gingham ribbon. And then this one's got what well, equally beautiful, if not more beautiful lace, and it's white. And it's so white, it's really lovely. And it's that lovely quality lace, it's beautiful. And there's loads of it as well. And small gingham. You never can have enough gingham. And then this. If that is not a shabby lace, I don't know what is. It's just, it's gorgeous. Really lovely. And it came with some library cards, which I've never had. They're just great. And on one side, they've got the date due and the borrower's name. And on the other side, author title, date due and the borrower's name. And I love them. I really love them. I can see they're going to be super, super handy. And I might coffee stain some, see what happens to them. I think they'll be all right. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with those. And uh, then these two iron-on um, motif, motifs, I think they're called. Uh, and seeing as my next journal up is going to be a boho journal, they are just the job. They're fa fabulous. Fabulous. And as if that wasn't enough, which it was, it was more than enough, this, the Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady colouring book. Oh, it is... It, uh, Look at it. Look at all the images sitting there waiting for me to colour them in. What a gorgeous, gorgeous thing to do in the evening when you're sitting down watching the telly. I'm absolutely delighted with it. Really, really delighted. So, who might have sent those, you say? Well, I came with a card. It says, Fiona, say hi to Mr F. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi. <laughs> and inside it says Fiona I hope you're well I want to thank you for your videos they bring a lot of people much joy keep them coming have a great summer much love and laughter it says here hugs from the heart and it's from Regina she sent all these from America can't believe it I mean I can't believe it thank you so very very much it's so kind so generous so thoughtful um oh, overcome almost thank you thank you very much indeed i'll give them to mr fix it to put somewhere safe for me for the moment right so that's kind of everything that i had to tell you and that beautiful beautiful gift from regina the coloring book it's just i know it's just amazing she does rock She's fantastic. Right, so let's try and get our feet back on the ground, if we can. Okay, so I'm doing um, a, a shabby chic journal at the minute, and I'm kind of near, coming towards the end of it. I'll show you, show you it all tomorrow. Um, it's got five, it's a ring-bound one. It's got five uh, sort of pages, if you like, in it, plus the back and the front cover. And this is one of the pages. Well, half of one, because I've got this side done. And today we're going to try and get this side done. And this is just um, the, these two pieces of paper with lace on. And I've gusseted the pockets. You know, I've, I've put a fold underneath to give me plenty of room to get this little, um, little thing <laughs> in. And it just opens up. And it's got uh, journaling tags and pockets and spaces down there with journaling stuff in so but it's a, it's looking a bit plain at the moment so i think when i do my final sweep through of things that need jazzing up a little bit i think some of these could benefit from a bit of lace and some uh, you know i put some bling down there but it's, it's not cutting it it's not enough <laughs> needs more so I'll, I'll leave that as it is in the book for the moment but i know when i go through for my final sort of look through that that's going to want to be um, jazzed up a little bit. So that's that. So on the other side, on this side, we're going to do a, well, something actually that's not that dissimilar to that. Um, however, it's going to go here and all the pages, all of these back pages here that I've, I'm using are 
six and a quarter width by nine inches long. So they're quite it's quite a large journal actually. Uh, much larger than the journals I used to make. But it's a nice size, I think. You can get lots of interest uh, in this sort of thing. So the first thing really that you need to do, or the last thing, it doesn't matter, is make yourself your back bit that's going to stick on to this. And then everything goes on top of that. Um, but I've used, I mean, throughout this journal, I've used these papers and I, I really, I love them. I've just absolutely fallen in love with them. So this is what we're doing. I can't remember if I've done this before for you or not. I don't, I think I might not have done. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but um, this is a template that I got off Google. I just searched for templates, wedding invitations, I think it was. Um, and this apparently is a, is a thing for a wedding invitation. Now, I have been married in my life. Um, I'm not presently married. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why I'm not called Mrs. Fixers. <laughs> um, although we have been together nearly 20 years. So, you know, it's about time really that we did something about it. We keep talking about it and they oh, no, I can't be bothered. <laughs> We so, don't know two people that could be witnesses. That's no, the problem. No, <laughs> we're, we're quite antisocial in our own life. So I don't know who we'd get to be witnesses, but that's by the by, you know, by the by, by the by. Right, so what happens is this bit folds up there and you get a pocket, and this is where the invitation goes, apparently. So I'm led to believe. And then here, there's a. Um, R RSVP thing that you have to say you're going or you're not going and send it back to the people and then it all flips over like that and makes a nice pocket that flips up its pocket that flips over and goes like that so anyway that's the general gist of things might go right or it might go wrong so I have printed this out on I've printed on both sides and I've used this um, newspaper I can't remember what it was called now. Newsprint Roses, I think. Uh, once again, from my porch prints, I, I've definitely now got every shabby set that she's done. And I love them. I love all of them. Um, the only thing that I should have been more careful of was when I fold that up, uh, this writing's going to be going the wrong way. But, you know, does it matter? I don't think it's really going to matter too much. So it's got score lines on the template. Here, here, here and here. There also. So I have transferred those to my this. And I'm just going to score them. And hopefully I'm going to get them straight. kind of hard to work out where straight is. Well, it's got to be straight along the top, hasn't it? So. Regina says she, you should do it live. Do what live? Get married, I guess. Oh, get married live. <laughs> yeah, we'd have loads of people then, wouldn't we? God, that would be a hoot, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be a hoot and a half. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the equivalent of Vegas over here, do we? No, we don't. The doesn't cut it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, that. Elvis wedding chapel in Blackpool. <laughs> oh, that's quite funny. Yeah, we should we should do it live. <laughs> <coughs> Dear me. Sometimes I worry about the sanity of our viewers. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Mind you, if they weren't bonkers, they wouldn't watch, would they? So there's always that. So I'm just trying to line up this little corner bit here with one of these grooves that's about right the top is square so if you keep the top pressed up against your scoreboard I think you'd be okay and this should come straight down onto here mm, not sure that is square it needs to come to there needs to, fo to fold on the tip of that point. 
I don't have a great deal of luck with scoreboards, if I'm honest with you. I also have, for my um, rotary cutter, I've got a blade that doesn't cut, it just scores. And I like that. There's only one downside to it. They look similar. So I very often pick up the one that I think is the scoring one to score a line in, and it's the cutty one, and that's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. And it makes me say rude words, which is terrible. You should never do that. Hilda, Fiona, I'll come be a witness. <laughs> I know, but can we actually make the effort to get married? <laughs> that's the thing. Can we actually make the effort? Because I'd have to buy some new clothes. Because I'm so fat that anything decent that I have doesn't really fit anymore. Oh, let's just leave it as it is. This is the conclusion we always come to. <laughs> let's just leave it as it is. <laughs> Could get married on Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, at a wedding and criminal trials, <laughs> yes. But you don't have a jury at a wedding, you know. I mean, you do have the bit where he says, does anybody know why these two people shouldn't be joined together? So I guess that is a bit of a jury, isn't it? You know, somebody stands up and shouts, no! <laughs> There's no point in having a jury if you know you're going to get a life sentence. Oi, oi matey. <laughs> That's it, the wedding's off. You're too gobby. Right, so I'm just carrying on as if this conversation actually wasn't happening. So I've folded in, um, I've, I've scored across there, folded in my little flappy bits, and they go there. Now the bit that you need to really take care of is that you don't stick them down right on that crease. This crease still needs to work, and it does. Through fair means or foul, I've actually managed to get it to do it. Um, you, if this folds exactly on that fold, you won't be able to get that to, to, to close. So that's no good. I don't much like that side, really. It's a bit, it's a bit dull, isn't it? Should I do it this way? I could do it this way. I'll fold, fold these out the other way. Fold that up. Oh, that's better. We've got nice rows on there now. Um, and then that will fold that way, won't it? Does that work? If that was like that. Oh, oh, oh. Calamity, calamity. I need to re-mark that one. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? That would work just the same. It's just the other side. Right, so the problem that I've now got is when I fold that in to where it exactly should be, this won't fold over and it's because my crease mark is too much this way. So I'm going to have to put another crease mark in it to get it to fold. It's not much, but it's enough to, uh, to stop it working. So I'll put it in. That's the one I've got, so let's put the next one along. So it's an eighth of an inch I'm coming in here, which is quite a bit really. But it'll solve our problem, I think. So crease it down on that one I've just done. This is fairly typical for journal making. You know, don't think that you've absolutely done something wrong if this happens. It's it's just what it just happens. So you just have to work out how to fix it and move on. Right, before I crease that in really, really heavy, I'll just check that's going to work. Yay, look at that. Debbie's listening to she's cooking. Who's cooking? Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Squash and onions. There's always somebody on here, isn't there, who's cooking something that sounds tasty. It's just not fair. 
I have my dinner made already because we made it yesterday and we made enough for three days actually and it's bean cassoulet I call it that sounds posh it's like bean stew you know what I mean right okay so what we need to do now is ink because I'm terrible for forgetting to ink things so the next journal after this one guys is a boho journal and I've begun collecting stuff for it. it it'll be a ring band journal just the same I like doing ring band journals it gives you more freedom uh, I think you can you can have thicker pages if you're doing a an ordinary junk journal that's down you know the pages are made into signatures you've got to be careful about not putting anything in that's too fat because your book just yours open and it doesn't look very nice whereas uh, ring bound journals you can be fat as you like really pretty much because the rings take up a lot of the thickness seems to be doing a lot of talking today <laughs> as per usual actually right oh where are we up to I've done down there I don't think so so I don't need to do any more there I'll just put a little bit down here I don't know if I'm going to actually line these pages with another paper yet I might do but just in case I don't Okay, cookie. Will you show making the ring brown from? Yes, it it would be a a ring bone, Natalie, because that's kind of um, it's kind of what I do really. It's what I enjoy doing most. So yeah, yeah. Things, what you're saying, will you show making the ring board? Ring or ring, ring bound from the, from the start. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yes, uh, and the start of it actually starts off uh, with Mr. Fixit, to be honest with you. He is the one that covers the pages in fabric, uh, like this, the fabric that we have down the side. Um, it cuts the heavy card, etc., etc. So the first uh, video will be a Mr. Fixit special, <laughs> uh, which I know you'll enjoy. He's a funny man. Uh, and then after that, it's kind of down to me. Right, so that's all of that done. Yeah. But I haven't done it this side. This uh, neutral, natural ink that I'm using. I like it. It's nice. It's not too dark in your face. But it's sometimes a bit difficult to tell where you've been. there. I quite like inking. I don't find it a chore at all. I find it satisfying in some way. My mother used to find ironing satisfying. I do, I do not share that. I have not inherited that from her at all. Right then, now what happens about the closure? Well, now's the time to think of it. So let's just pretend that's glued onto there. So this comes over here. This flap comes over here. And I'm going to put one of these uh, press stud, the plastic, but the press studs onto it to close it. So let sound effect. <laughs> um, and I've chosen pink. We've got a vast variety of colours. Obviously came from Ali, I would have thought. So they're just little plastic. Um, where are you? Where are we? Oh, <laughs> there we are. Just little plastic snappers. So I need to make a mark where uh, where I want it to be. 
so I need to find the centre and that measures seven and a quarter. That's a very convenient measurement, isn't it, to have? Um, seven and a quarter, so that's three and a half, three and five eighths then, I reckon, by my maths. So I'm just going to put a mark with my pencil at three and five eighths. Jen says great sound effects. <laughs> Sounded more like a horse going through a cobbled street. Matthew says she wants to do one like you do. Yeah, that that that's great. That's uh, that's. Thank you for letting me know. That's what I need to know. Um, <laughs> uh, right. So what I want to do now is put a hole in that. And I don't know if I've introduced you to this. My new friend, Mr. Cropperdile. Look at him, he's fantastic. Mr. Fixit found him second hand on uh, eBay. eBay and purchased him for me. I'm not sure how he works, if I'm brutally honest with you. So I want the smallest hole, so that must be at the front. No, that's that one there. Yeah, that's the middle. That's not the front. All right, okay. Because um, all I want to do is just mark where it's going so I can then mark underneath onto this piece. Uh, so I think, I think that's it. Yeah. The spikes are on the plastic, aren't you? Just push them through. Yeah. I just want to make a mark here where, where mark. it's going to. I'm putting a hole through. I'm putting a hole on this one. But it's only a little hole. No? Okay. So you can work out where the where the thing goes, can you, without a hole? Can you? Can you work out where the thing... Just th put a hole in it. We don't know. Well, everything was going so nicely. <gasps> and then hostilities arose. Right, so that's just a little hole, and Crocodile can go away. And... And now can make a mark through this hole that I've made onto there, which is where the other bit of the of the clippy thing goes. So one part goes there, one part goes there. But this is just card, and it does need to be uh, have a bit of support. So don't we all? We all need a bit of support. So I just use a bit of. It, this could be any card because it's not going to be seen because I'm going to cover everything anyway. So I happen to have an inch circle punch. If you've got a bigger one, I think that would be probably better. But I've just got an inch one, so that's what I'm using. Um, there's that hole. I'll just make it very obvious that's what it is. It's not a hole, that actually. So I'm going to glue these onto there. And when it comes time to put the press stud on, I'm going to hand it to Mr. F because he's better about these things. So that's just going to lend a bit of support to the snapper, the press stud, because we don't want all that pressure just on one piece, you know, of card. I don't think it would handle it too well in the long term. Are you covering that outside? Are you covering oh the no, inside? I'm covering the inside. That's why I was going to make a hole. Yeah. Make a hole. Thank you. I was going to make two holes, but as you heard, we had a bit of a contretemps. <laughs> That's the posh well, the thing is, you don't need holes for them press studs. No, I know, but it's only tiny, so it's just a marker, really. Yeah. Please hold it. A placeholder indeed. Right, so let's work this out because I don't want the thing on the wrong side. So that's going there. That's folding over. That's folding over. So I need to put my... This. There. So when it comes time for Mr F to put the press studs in, um, he knows where... He knows what he's doing. Time's come, is it? 
I just need to think it through a sec. Um, is it is it better to cover the back of the press stud or leave it? Because there's a piece of paper going to go on here. Should we put the press stud on and then the piece of paper? Or the piece of paper and then the press stud? I would say the piece of paper and the press stud, otherwise you'll end up with a bump in your paper. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right, then, chaps. After much deliberation. Oh, no, you can hear my brain working today, can't you? <laughs> it's hard work today. <laughs> I think it's all that talk about getting married. It's quite thrown me for a loop, really. I mean, we do, it's not that we don't have this conversation. We have this shall we get married conversation about... I don't know, once every three, four weeks, something like that. Should we get married? Mm, one day. Um, so look at this beautiful paper. It's from, uh, of course, my porch prints. It's divine and I love it. So I'm just going to take the uh, white edge off here. Oh, that's upside down. It's sort of shinier on the, uh, on the wrong side, isn't it? You can't get it to stay still. Do many of you use um, quilting rulers or is it, am I alone in this? They're excellent to use. Hilda, wasn't it you? Did you buy one? They're really, they're a good help actually. Regina's going for a coffee refill. Who is Regina? Yes, would you like a coffee? I would love a coffee. I should make a coffee. Good idea Regina, good idea lass. I made some people laugh. Regina said, "Keep her straight." Keep her straight. I am straight. I'm re. I'm, I am the straightest person you could find. I think anyway. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this this thing here with this paper. That's the plan. Okay. Let's let's get down to doing something sensible. So I need. I wanted to come in. That's why I've, I've double printed this. Printed on both sides. Uh, I want it to be in a little bit from the edge. So five inches, I think, takes me away from that crease and away from there. And uh, down here, I mean, the pocket's coming up over here, so I don't have to be deadly exact, but it's about seven. So five by seven. So let's cut a piece of, of paper off five by seven. Cut this off at five. I think it might be the hot weather, you know. I think that might be what's doing it to me. So that's five, right? Okay. So I see, I see. I love this paper. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can you imagine Regina's lace that she sent me with that? Beautiful. Beautiful. So there we go. So I need this off at seven, or well, slightly less, because it's going into the pocket, so it doesn't it doesn't really have to be exactly anything. So let's just have a look at that. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Jen says it's her anniversary today. Oh, happy anniversary, Jen. 28 years. Goodness me, well done. That is impressive. Well done, girl. Regina wanted to know you're using the 9 by 9 This is a 9 by 9 I was just using a 13 by 13 because the paper... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Yeah, it's nine and a half. There's nine, so it's nine and a half by nine and a half omni grid. Um, but I'm I'm using A3 paper, so I needed the thirteen by thirteen to cut that. This is another um, ruler that is. Oh, this is such a useful ruler. I mean, it's so useful that I've actually worn the blinking markings off it. It's uh, twelve and a half by six and a half. 
a really excellent ruler to start with, I, I think. Then if you want to, you can get other fancy rulers. But um, Right, so let's ink this. Oh, here comes Mr. Fix it with the coffee. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I better put it there because you know what's going to happen, don't you? Yep. <laughs> It'll end up spilled everywhere. So I'm just going to ink around here so we can definitely see the uh, the marked line between it and the backing paper. Said she ended up buying three quick and rollers. The words that held it, <clears throat> you won't regret it. I'm telling you, you definitely won't. We've got some from when I actually was using them for quilting um, that are all angles and triangles and hexagons. Yeah, all sorts of things and stuff for Dresden plates. You people that quilt will know what I mean. Right, so I'm going to stick that on there leaving a nice little border around it so yeah i like that do i like it more that way than that way mm, i like that way better i think yeah okay see this is the thing this is what takes time when you're junk journaling it's not the actual process it's not the actual putting things together although you wouldn't believe it from me today because i'm flapping around uh, it's the decisions <laughs> it's when you finish something and you're trying to work out which um, ephemera you want to add to your page and stuff boy oh boy that takes time and then I like to sew around all my pieces of ephemera also takes time but I think it shows in the finished result that if you put lots of time and lots of love into it, it it shows up and you get an, a much nicer end result. So there we are, we'll put that down and then use your bone folder <clears throat> just around the edge. Now it's at this stage that I could, if I wanted to, sew around here, but on this occasion, I'm not going to because I'm going to sew around the pocket, the tag that goes to the journaling card that goes in here. I'm making heavy weather of this today. <laughs> right, so let's, uh, let's, uh, that's not going to impede our press stud any, no. So what I'm going to do for these pocket flaps, and this is called a gusset, guys. Now in this country, gusset, I don't know what it means in the, in the US but in this country gusset is the sort of double thickness bit that you get in your pants <laughs> you know what I mean uh, unless it's your winter pants of course yeah <laughs> the triple layer triple gusset. <laughs> so gusset is a bit of a <laughs> funny word here you know when, people, when you talk about gusset it's it, it's a bit sniggery um, but these flaps here on this pocket that fold over, they are, they're called gussets, okay? And what happens is they allow you to put more into that pocket than if they weren't there and it was glued flat. You get what I mean? See what I'm saying? So, gussets, yes. It's kind of a word for Miranda gussets. I don't know. I don't know. Do you lot in the States get Miranda? She's very English. I don't know if Regina, your husband, wouldn't get her, I'm sure. Maybe I'm doing him down. Maybe it was somebody else's husband that didn't get the English humour. Um, oh, no. I'm too warm today. So I'm just putting my double sided down and sticking myself up into the bargain. <laughs> oh my lord. Whoever buys this journal is going to have me attached to it, I think. 
Right, so just cut those off flush with your uh, gusset. There we go. And Deborah says she's seen Miranda. Oh, have you? Did you get her? Oh, well, you're English, really, aren't you? So you prob I'm sure you did. Miranda used to have a series of words that sort of made her snigger and that she used to repeat ad finitum because they're just funny words. One was moist. Um, I can't I can't really remember the rest, but... Um, flange. Flange, that was another one, flange. And, and on, an, on them, by themselves, they aren't rude words. Um, it's just that... They can be construed that way, let's say. So I've taken the tape off uh, the double sided and I'm just going to add a little bit of Aileen's just for good fortune. Not much, just a little bit. I just, I always worry that if I just use double sided, that it's at some stage, you know, 10 years hence, going to dry out. Um, and not form a good bond so I can't I can't bear the thought of that so I'm using belt and braces approach so make sure that you get that in that you stick it down in from that fold and then this one wants to go right up the side so there we are so we get a nice look at that pouchy pocket there beautiful so we could, if we wanted to... Um, Deborah says she's not English, but PBS shows yogurt comedies, it says. Ah, uh, right. Well, PBS here, for us here in this country, shows all the uh, really, really good crime programmes, you know, all the serial killer stuff. I love that stuff. What's wrong with me? When I'm sitting here crafting and I've got the telly on, that's that's what I'm watching. If you can hear funny noises, the dog's dreaming. Um, right, so this one is going to have a little journal in it. I might leave this just as it is and make the journal cover out of that paper. I think that would probably be all right. And this one here, I'm going to cover, because of this strengthener thing here, I'm going to cover with this paper as well. So what I am going to do... I'm glad Arthur Smith and his wife got away with it. Yeah, Arthur Smith and his wife had a very narrow escape. They were pinned over an overturned car for an hour and a half. For half an hour. Oh, half an hour. Oh, what they're complaining about. Then. Um, yeah, narrow escape. So I'm just going to hold this up to there. I'm going to get my pencil, draw around it. So I've got the proper shape. But I don't want it to come all the way up to here. I want it, you know, a little, same as we did there, a little bit in from the edge. So I'm actually going to cut it and then I'm going to cut it again because my cutting skills are not world famous. So I'm really looking forward to doing this boho journal. Um, I've, I have loved, 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 loved doing this shabby one. Shabby, I think, is my favourite of, of, of all things. And I love these papers from Stephanie at my porch prints. <clears throat> I've had a whale of a time, really. Um, but, you know, it's time for a change, ringing the changes. And I'm thinking of all the sort of really glitzy sequins and you know, all that sort of stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. If I, if I was to do, which it's looking like I'm going to, um, a tutorial start to finish journal, ring bound journal, what would you like? I mean, would you like shabby? Would you like boho? Would you like botanical? Would you like Halloween? <laughs> Bridal, kitchen, sewing? What would you like? There's no end of ideas. No end. So let's see if that's okay. 
Yeah, look at that, it's lovely. So it needs inking because you can't really see it too well. So I'll give it a bit of inky. Probably need to be quite heavy on this ink actually because it really wasn't standing out too well. Jen wants to know what makes a journal boho? Well, it's kind of that bohemian style of things. Like this is a shabby chic journal, simply because the papers I've used are are shabby and I've used cream lace and, you know, all things associated with shabby shabby. Um, boho, it tends to be, you use sort of bits of Indian sari silk, sequins, um, shiny, we, we do a video of a boho. Yeah, there is a video somewhere of my, the last boho that I did. Um, so that's going to go there. And once I've got that on there, I think I can hand it then to Mr. Fix-It to put the poppers on. I could do it. I have been practising. But it wasn't good. It wasn't pretty. So um, I think the uh, the best idea is for him to do that. Anything that is in any way technical, it's like, mm, can you do that? And he's so good as well. All right, so let's just pop that on there. Try and get an equal sort of gap. Make sure it's not in the crease. No, we're all right. We're doing okay. Go. So the, the only bit really left is the journal that's going to go in here. So if I give, see this is the tool, I don't even know which way is up, that way. That's the tool that you squash those little press studs that I showed you in with. Um, but because this is in the middle of the page, you can't get it in far enough. That's as far as it will go, you see. We need to be here. So Mr Fix has had to improvise. So thank you, my dear. The yeah, marvelous. Could you pass me another page of the journal and I'll show them worst. Which one? Anyone? That top one. Top one will do. Top. Thank you. So this is another page that I've been doing throughout the week. Um, I've been beavering away this week. I really, really have. Um, this is a page you you first saw this page on the. Excuse me, I'm going to have a mouthful of my lovely coffee. Um, on the journal that we was the giveaway. This one, however, um, it's it's different because it's. But anyway, there's the front page. There's the next page. Two little journaling cards in. Some lovely lace and some bling. This one, journaling cards, and it's got this sort of angle thing going on with it that matches the overall journal. And then it flips out again and we've got this page it opens up it's got a, this is before I got Re Regina's uh, library cards but one of one of them would look lovely in there wouldn't it with that that would be perfect Ooh, and that just uh, fastens like so and then this page here it's got this sort of floral arrangements in the top corner with pearls and ribbons and hessian and whatever two longish journaling cards in there all being sewn around in this lovely uh, tag pocket and a little corner thingy there and then it all folds up like so and then it all folds out this way so we've got this i like this little page it's lovely it's two little pockets and two tiny little journaling tags that I've backed. I've backed them in coffee stain paper. Um, and then the word dream. This one, which is an envelope in a little corner tuck there, paper in the envelope so you can uh, journal away. And then this couple of pockets, some bling, some lace, um, some journaling cards, 
and the fairy, slightly different fairy to the one that we did in, in the last one, but still under acetate and still, you know, pretty. So that is that. And then on the back of that, we've got this, which is actually the envelope from the folio that we did. Do you remember the folio? It had like on one side of it, like a file folder sort of thing. And then on this side was the, um, the envelope. So that's just tied in with that nice thin satin uh, ribbon. A uh, little pocket, some bling. And then it opens up. And you, I'm sure you'll remember this. It's the, uh, the little journal that we made. It says imagine. So that's a nice page as well, I think. Goes just pops into that pocket and then ties up. I don't think it really needs to be tied up, but it, it just looks nice. It's just another finishing touch. But once again, um, this needs something it might be a word that's what it probably will end up getting but on the final flip through when i do it um you can easily spot these places that they're lacking you know some things you haven't actually piled on everything that you could pile on um and so that's not my journal if it's not massively piled on i love um a natural history journal mm, yeah it shows Birds and small animals, etc. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's kind of what's happening. In this journal, there are five of these leaves and then a front and a back cover, which I haven't done yet. Um, and so you'll probably be with me tomorrow while I'm doing the front cover or the back cover or trying to get both of them done if I can um, and get it into my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop has nothing in it. <laughs> it's empty. You've raided me. <laughs> uh, thank you very, very much to those of you who bought my things. I'm really grateful to you. Um, and I you know, hope you like them. I hope you get as much enjoyment out of them as I have in making them. I do try my very hardest to make them um, faultless, but the handmade and, you know, things happen. Right, so let's just sit here and drink our coffee then whilst we wait for... Oh, Andy's here. Right, so there we are, there we are. Look at that, perfect. Oh, that is so good, Mr Fix-It, thanks. Um, right, so I've just got this middle bit to do, really. And as I said, for that, I'm going to make a journal. I could use this same paper, but I think it would start to get a bit blah. So I'm going to use this paper, which is a shabby ticking. And oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Just gorgeous. So because it's going to be a journal going folded that way, I need two times whatever it is. So... I don't want it right up to the corner, to the, you know, the fold. So let's make a mark there. So that'll be halfway. We need twice whatever that is. And I've taken into account that white edging. So this is a 13 by 13 ruler because I'm on A3. So that measures five inches. That makes life easy, doesn't it? So I need to cut this off at 10 doesn't often happen like that does it so I'm just because I've got a quilting ruler I can line it up with the edge of that print and it should be pretty straight so there we go so I need to know how well, let's take these white bits off because then they're not going to be any use to us at all any time. It's going to come in a little bit there. I'm very, very near the edge and there's no need to be. I 
do most of you um, good folks sew? Or do you just do paper crafting? Or are you painters? Or do you have other... Um, Regina, I know that you do resin pours. I've seen some lovely ones. Um, what what do you what do you guys do, as well as um, journaling? I uh, paint with acrylics. I paint with watercolor. I uh, wasn't far enough in. I do all sorts of things. I, 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 I decorate boxes. I like doing that. Um, I like all. I really like all sorts of crafts, and I I like sewing. I used to sew all the time. Right. So, what measurement do we need this to be? I am going to put a back piece on that actually because I want to put a belly band on. Um, I think six and a half would be a good measurement there. Let's measure six and a half up. Wow, I'm suddenly, suddenly moving now. Hallelujah. There we go. So that's that. It's left us with some good, nice remnanty pieces. So this is going to be our the cover for our journal that's going to go in there. But what I'm planning on doing is putting a belly band in to hold it in place with this lacy ribbon, like that. So I would rather put another piece of paper as a lining paper and tuck that behind it, like that, so you don't see the raw edge of the, of the lace. Okay, with me so far? Deborah says she works in watercolours. Oh dear. And acrylics. And acrylics. Oh, you teach children's classes. Goodness, that's nice. Um, so, from, from there, from the end, to, that's the foldy bit, so about there. Let's cut that off. Do you get through vast amounts of paper, don't you? Really. But save all your scraps because um, I'll show you tomorrow how I use my scraps. In a sort of meaningful way. Yeah, that's right on the edge. Um, what am I doing here? I can't remember. Yeah, there's something really nice about painting. It, you can really lose yourself in it. Watercolours more so than acrylics, possibly. But that's just the drying time, etc. I think that makes me say that. It's very nice to have a cup of coffee with you guys today. I don't, I don't often have a cup of coffee when I'm live. What's, what's going on there? It doesn't look square. Right. So, how long do we want this to be? Down to about there. I can't take my eyes off it, otherwise I'm going to lose where it is. That's it. So go on then, start the rounds. What's everybody having for lunch, for tea? I've told you what I'm having. I'm having bean cassoulet. Which is kind of posh, posh way of saying um, some sort of stew. Right, let's just check we've got that right. Yeah, that looks nice. I think. 
So I'll ink it up, but before I glue it down, I need to make sure that I've got my belly band in because that's the whole purpose of putting this in really. It's amazing what you can make out of just paper, pretty paper. So many variations and just stuff that you, you know, you just think of things and then try and work out how to do it with paper. Right, there we are. So that's going to go there. So I need to kind of work out where the belly band is going to go. I think you need to have enough room so you can actually get it in and get it out. Otherwise, it, do, it never looks very good. So I'm, I'm going to bring it in a fair bit. Because if I take it too far that way, the book will keep slipping that way and it'll never be in the right place. So it's kind of happy medium place really which I think is probably about there so I'm just gonna um, mark that over onto the back draw a line straight line up there so that's where my lace is going to go so you want this relatively tight but not too tight it's a bit like the Goldilocks thing you know not tight enough to be effective but not so tight that it allows the thing to flap around so let's just cut that off with about two quarters of an inch or so each end and we'll glue that down and if we get the ends in the right place, then on the other side, it's going to be square. So I'm going to use once again, um, the tried and tested double sided tape and glue. So it should hold it in place. So I'm just going to put a bit of that there. Jean's husband's making a lantern ladder. Oh, what's that? No, she's now making holes on my front porch for it to go. So, oh. some sort of lantern, I guess, outside your house. Sounds interesting. Does that? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What is it, Regina? Please. Sorry for being dim, but we don't have such things here. I don't. I don't believe. Right, so that's my double sided. Press it down firmly because if you don't, you can't get the, the backing off. Especially this 3M stuff, it really needs pressing down. Gina says she's going to do a picture once she's painted the big sucker. The big sucker. We're going to buy some lanterns and plant hangers for it. Oh, it sounds lovely. Sounds ornamental, doesn't it? it sounds like sort of a shelving, ladder shelving yeah. thing. Yeah, sounds ornamental. Right, I'm going to use, uh, not the earlines that I normally use, but I'm going to use this Beacon 3-in-1. If you're in the States, use Fabrifix if you've got it. We can't get it really over here. And the head's come off my pin, so I'm in a bit of a sorry state. So I'm using the Beacon 3-in-1 as well as my um, double-sided. It's a bit awkward, this pin, because it's got no head on it. Would you like a new pin? Uh, I'm all right for the time being. Um, so work out which is your right and your wrong side. And stick it over there, flush with the line that we've drawn. Make sure that that's nice and firmly down. Thank you. 
So you see when it comes out there, there's no nasty um, ends to the uh, lace that will get frayed. Gone a bit overboard on the uh, double sided here. Let's put some in that I don't need. I might stretch it to the. No, I'll leave that. Put some glue on it. Come to that second one, I would have thought. And Did you're we? sticking the old thing down anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. The glue's going to dry now. Right, so make sure that it's up to the edge of your thing. Don't stretch it because you want a bit of movement in it um, to allow the book, the journal, to go in it. There we are. That's that way, isn't it? Yeah, right, okay. So, that's going to go there. Description of a ladder thing. It's a ladder that will have three rungs off of it, two of the same size lantern on top and bottom, and a bigger one in the middle with plants hanging from the side. Blimey! I just use double sided tape and glue on kind of everything. It's kind of my fallback position. I'm sure it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, it does. It has instant grab. Whereas the, the glue, although it's pretty instant, it's not instant enough for me. You don't have to, though. I mean, you know, you absolutely don't have to. Just for the purposes of the live. <laughs> for, for, for lives, you really need things that are going to work really, really quick. And... Um, double-sided works quick sometimes it works a bit too quick and if you put some wet glue in with it it gives you just the chance to move it a touch if you need to um, so you know you, you get the um, the chance to just shift it around a little bit this glue is nearly empty let's put some glue on the back of that I think that's pretty empty actually use it the bottle So there we go, that's glued to the hilt, surely. Is that the way? Was that the way? I'm actually going to put it that way because it says toilet there. And I'm not awfully keen of that word, so I'm just going to put it down the bottom. Just need to move that across a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Now you see, if I'd, if I'd only if I'd done all of it with double sided, I wouldn't have been able to do that. If I'd done all of it with, um, oh, this is spewing everywhere. With Aileen's and let it dry, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So the, the glue stick is great. Don't overlook glue stick. It's it's a very useful tool. If you hadn't used double sided on the lace, we'd still be waiting for it to dry. Yeah. So there we are. That's uh, coming along quite nicely, I think. Right. So this is the cover for our journal. Let's just check that it fits nicely and we're happy with it so the back cover is going to slide into there I could maybe got away with a quarter of an inch less than that but fits so I am actually just going to take a little bit off because just when I get the bulk of the papers inside it so I'm, I'm just going to take, I mean, it's a, a little bit, it's some, something and nothing. So that's fine. It can stand that and, and I'm happy with that. It'll sit 
sit nicely. What I really want to do is cover this with coffee stain paper. I don't like, I'm not liking this white very much. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to cover it. And I know it's all time. Sorry. But these are, you know, this is junk journaling on the edge. Anybody still with us? Everybody all right? Um, that says she's about to lose Wi-Fi. Oh no! 50p in the meter, love. <laughs> or not. Right. So I'm just going to blue glue this. I've just got some nasty bit on the end. Just going to get rid of. It's just going to go on my page, which I don't really want. Oh, oh that kitchen towel's a bit, <coughs> a bit gluey. I got a new roll of kitchen towel. Look at it. It's gigantic. And it was expensive. Mr. Fix it says I have to use it carefully. <laughs> I agreed, of course. Just while you were doing that, I'm just going to change some settings. So okay. It might be a bit of a jump. Yes, we're getting a bit of a lag, but I think I left the settings on the video setting rather than the streaming setting. All right. The idea, there's no white whatsoever in the... It because I'm, I said I'm stopping it and starting it. Can I, can I, you can I... Go now. Eh? You can talk now, yes. Oh. Let's come back now. I didn't know. I was talking away to you guys. <laughs> and there's nobody there. What I was saying was, I just don't like the idea of the back of this journal, and I know it's just a journal in one little piece of ephemera in the whole thing, but I don't like it being white. Hi, Donna. Still here watching. That's good. Thank you. Thanks to everybody, actually, who, um, who watches me. You don't know how much I appreciate it. You don't know what it means to me. It's really, really good of you, and I love it. And just think of the fun we're going to have making it journal from start to finish. The only uh, comment that I saw that we had about what the content would be was from Shaz. And she suggested kind of like a natural history one with um, birds and small animals and that sort of thing. Anybody else got any ideas? There's loads that you can choose from. Cooking, you know, with recipes in. Christmas even, so you could get ahead for Christmas. Uh, sewing. Um, botanical flowers. That'd be nice for you, Debbie. You could paint some. Um, right. There we are. That's so much better. That pleases me no end now. Um, I can't be doing with uh, things that aren't quite finished properly. There's no need for it, is there, for the sake of a couple of minutes? So let's fold that down and just, yeah, that's folding nicely. Lovely. Don't be too pushy with your bone folder because it's very easy to tear this card, especially now when it's wet with the glue inside. So just be quite careful. Uh, I'm just going to run my ink up there. Right, so now what we need are some pages. And I showed you how to do this not very long ago. So I'm sure you can remember. I don't know if that's big enough. Suggestion from Jen. Oh, has it finished? No. Have you lost it? 
Yeah. They were still going on. Oh, I'll cancel whatever's coming up then. It's gone on to somebody else's video. Yeah. I had to stop I, it and I restart can't. it. Do you want me to read it to you? Yes, I please. think Mr S should pick the next theme. Oh my life, it's going to be motorcycles or something. Well, A4 that way just isn't quite enough. So I'm going to have to break into some other A4 sheets to get it wide enough. Thank you. So I've got two lots of different coffee stained paper. I've got um, the 160 grams, which are quite thick. But for the purpose of this, I've got 90, which is um, slightly thicker than normal copy paper, uh, which is stained. And it's perfect for inside journals. Perfect. So let's just see where we want this to come to. And you can cut them all off to, together. And we're going to come to there. And then uh, down to there. Okay. I've got a wriggle on now, have you noticed? Hmm, thinking. Mr. Fix It's thinking. I thought I could get... The, I was getting the vibes coming my way. Smell of burning. Yeah, smell of burning. So that's kind of 10 inches to there. And keep all your scraps, um, you know, sensible scraps like that. Now, if you want to be fastidious, and usually I am, I would ink each and every single one of these pieces of paper for the purposes of this live. However, You'll be glad to know that I'm not going to do that. Regina says English architecture. Like me, Regina. That could be interesting. Right, so hopefully we've got some pages for our book. I don't know how many. I think it's maybe about six pages there, something like that. So what you do is you take them and you fold them over. Like that. Give them a good creasing. <laughs> You're going to get a really good creasing. So there we are. That's that creased. And you get your bit of uh, yoga mat. Yoga mat. <laughs> We've seen it twice. Does it make it magically appear? Yeah. So good they named it twice. Thank you. So now what I'm going to do is get these little clips that I don't know where they came from, Mr. Pound Fix It. Shop. Just oh pound shop. There you go. Pound for ten. Pound for ten, what a bargain. So get that right in the crease, right exactly where you want it, and clip it in. It's sometimes better if you clip opposite sides, top and bottom. like so so that is not going anywhere and it's right in the crease excellent so then you get your uh, pokey tool which I hope you all have a pokey tool life would be quite incomplete without one mm, tell me about it there's no need like seriously no need Right, so I'm measuring this, and it measures, well, six and a half, I would say. So I reckon that's three and a half, so I'm going to make a mark there. And then I'm coming in an inch from each end. Can you see what I'm doing here? Can I see what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and an inch from that end. And I'm marking it right on the crease. And I'm going in with my pokey tool. And I'm going to hold that up so it's a bit of a valley in there and go right through. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go right through this way first. I can't get through. That's quite tough, that actually. It's going to be strong then, isn't it? Yeah. 
a good job indeed. And through that one. Right. So that doesn't look very even, does it? Does that look even? Nope. No. No. Uh, it measures six and a half. So the mid. Oh no! I've put it at three and a half. It should be three and a quarter. All right. Well, I'm just going to ignore that mark that I put in. Not that it would matter. I'm just going to pretend it's not there and put the mark where it should be. It wouldn't make the slide look any different, really. No, it wouldn't. But I like it looking flat up there. Right, so make sure you measure carefully. <laughs> These things happen. They just happen. You've, you've, you know, you've just got to live with it, kind of, really. Um, sometimes, it, you know, it happens to such an extent that you've got to waste a piece of paper and uh, then start again. It just happens. No point beating yourself up about it. Guys, did I show you? I think I did show you, didn't I? These um, dictionary words from um, my porch prints. They're lovely. I, I really love them and I've used them quite a lot in this journal. Uh, I like these ones with the roses on, obviously. Um, but there's some really nice, um, nice words on there without being too sloppy and sentimental. So I'm using this cotton perlay string again. I know you've seen me do this. For whoever it was that wanted to know how to um, scissors, how to tie a signature into a journal, this is how you do it. It's the same. This is the same stitch exactly as you would use for that, except here we're just making a tiny little um, book booklet. We'll call it a booklet. So I've got my, I've still got my clips, my clamps in place. I'm starting from the inside of the middle and I'm going out. And when you come to sort of, you've left a reasonable length, just hold that in your thumb out the way. And Eugenia says, yes, and now I can print them. Woo -woo. Yeah, I know I was thinking she's, of you. She's yet to use it though. Well, she's been cleaning for it all morning. She's had to make a great big space so she could get a printer nicely set up. I think she's made some, somewhat of an altar to it. <laughs> They're quite big and heavy. They are. Laser printers. They are. Was it a laser printer? I think so. Wow. Wow, hope he did splash out big time. Look, here we go. You go in through the middle one, hang on to the tail, right? Then you come out and you go back into the hole at the bottom or the top it doesn't matter then a big stitch back to the one at the top so you're left with a big one big stitch in there then you come up at the middle one again but on the other side of the big stitch to this tail so you see the big stitch there this tails on this side so you come up through the, the middle hole again don't split your um, wool string, whatever. And you want to be on the other side of that big long stitch to the existing tail. Okay, so up through there. So there we go. That's that's it. That's a, a signature stitch. Uh, whoever, I'm so sorry, I can't remember who asked for it. So make sure it's all nice and tight. Don't over pull it because you know this is just copy paper so that's nice and tight and then tie it off tie a knot in it first just so it's secure and then just a, a bow or you can uh, attach beads to the end ends of the strings whatever floats your boat particularly you know really you mean whatever whatever you fancy you need to tie a little knot, probably in string or thread or whatever, because uh, you don't want it coming loose and looking unsightly. Nearly <laughs> chopped my knot off there, it was very close. So there we are, chop that so it's tidy. 
right so that's that you can now undo your clamps please please if you've got a pointy tool of anything don't use it on your cutting board make sure you've got something you know um, a table mat anything between it that's going to absorb the point of the tool you'll wreck your board if you don't so there we are that's that's that way the font's going that way uh, and we've got a very neat little journal there where's the page gone <laughs> Need inking around there, as I said, um, which I will do. And it slides nicely. That's an, that's nice. That sits there nicely. Um, just needs a bit of persuading to fold that. You know, there's nothing holding it like that apart from the glue on the paper. So once it's folded up for a while, it will be okay. So that's that. I think we did right to cut that down because you can see it's quite. It does shut, it's perfect. But if it had been any more, it would have been open a bit and it would have caught on that, which is not what we want. So there we are. What I still need to do is um, make a journaling card for there and a bit of glitz and glamour, you know, write journal on here or something. Um, but overall, that's it. We're done. It's going to fit uh, on, on into the journal. Look at that presser. It's beautiful. Thanks for that, Mr. Fix. It's a really good job. Uh, and there we are. So <laughs> that's what we've achieved in an hour and a half. I hope you think it was worth it. It's a really nice thing. I like it. I think it's useful. So, and it's pretty. It's pretty. So I'm going to flatten that by uh, sitting on it now. <laughs> but it would flatten it. You've got to say, haven't you? Nobody would argue with my weight. Um, I know, I'm just going to put it under some books. And I'll make a tag for here you know a journaling card and then decorate it decorate it up so when you see it tomorrow it'll all be finished so that's it guys thank you very very much for joining me as ever you're a fan fabulous lot you really are you're full of chats and i love it so thanks very much i'll see you tomorrow hopefully at uh, two o'clock hour time when we might be doing the covers or we might be going through it, giving it its last judge, <laughs> finishing touches. So I'll see you tomorrow, two o'clock, hopefully. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye.